Celeste is one of my favorite games of all time, and one of the best things about it is the amount of ways you can play it. I have about 100 hours in the base game alone, and I'm not even done with everything that it has to offer. But getting golden strawberries is an absolute headache, and I want a different type of challenge. You see, there's a secret golden berry reward if players can beat the first level of the game without Madeline's main ability, the dash. This changes the level completely, turning previously simple tasks into precise platforming and exploitation of the game's mechanics. But it only exists within one level. I want to see just how far we can take this restriction. I'm going to try and beat Celeste with as few dashes as possible. In episode 1, I'm going to go over the prologue, chapter 1, and chapter 2. I'll explore the mechanics, methods, and theories I had to dash as few times as possible. Depending on how I feel and the response this video gets, I'll make this into a series covering the rest of the game. So let's get underway. Prologue has our first roadblock, the tutorial for the dash button. We have to learn to use the very thing that we're trying to avoid. You might be wondering how. After all, our character can't move and none of our buttons work besides the dash. Well, it can be skipped, but it requires a very tricky technical maneuver. And with that, on to chapter one. I'm not going to spend much time on the specifics here. Chapter one is the only level in the game that is beatable without dashing once, unless you count the prologue. We know that. There are guides with way more in-depth explanations on how to do everything. While that's useful, I'm much more interested in the other stuff, the more untouched aspects of this challenge. However, this place does serve as an excellent training ground for the kinds of moves and techniques we'll be familiar with for a majority of the run, starting as soon as the second screen. So let's break down how wall jumps work really quick for those who don't know. The idea is that when Madeline jumps on a wall, you can hold the climb button to stick in place on that wall, moving up and down to scale it. You can also press the jump button to jump off said wall in the direction you input. However, from what I can tell at least, the hitbox for the jump extends to Madeline's legs, whereas the hitbox for her climbing is her arms. How does this relate to anything? Well, if you try to use the spring, you can only get so far, and if you try to jump from clinging to the wall, that doesn't cut it either. However, if you jump up the wall, then jump again just as your feet touch it. There's a small area you can jump off, giving you enough height to pass over the gap. This is mostly referred to as a spike jump, as it looks like you're jumping off the spikes themselves. You'll want to get used to this tech, as knowing the mechanics of the wall jump and what you can and can't get extra height from is vital to squeeze out those dashes. Another vital technique is taught on the very next screen. Here, I've run out of stamina halfway through climbing this wall. Yet, I still managed to get to the top. Why? Because of another quirk in the way wall jumps work. See, if you hold towards the wall, you'll jump in a way that causes you to lose height. However, if you don't press anything at all, you'll jump at a much more vertical angle that lands you higher up, letting you get across this wall. I have no idea why this is, but it's important. Stamina is something you need to watch out for in this run. And this technique doesn't use any of it whatsoever, making it a very important tool in our kit. Next, I want to take a look at this section right here. It's a similar setup to the spike jump room from earlier, but the gap we have to cross is much wider. A simple spike jump from the wall won't cut it. However, notice that when we spike jump, we're starting with zero momentum and getting more as we move in the direction we want to go. Luckily, there's a platform to the left. We can simply jump off of it and hit that same spot we hit in the previous spike jump, but this time, that extra momentum just lets us cross the gap. It is incredibly precise, and you will probably die a lot trying to do it. But it teaches us that momentum and the way we set up the various tricks of this run are pretty important. Finally, I'd like to talk about the screen right after it. There's this section right here, where we need to jump from this wall to this bridge. However, if we make a leap for it, we can't get enough distance. Notice that, similar to the vertical spikes, the horizontal spikes just above us have a very small window that can be jumped off of, giving us extra height. The solution, as far as I can tell, is to remap your controls so that you have two jump buttons and press one right after the other so you can hop off the gap and get to the other side while not losing the extra distance you get from holding down the jump button. So what do we learn from this? Some of these solutions are really stupid. Not much else is found in this level, just a marriage of techniques we already know about. Use momentum, abuse spike hitboxes, get creative, and it is possible without dashing. 
that we already know. Believe me, this is where the run really starts. Chapter 2 starts out pretty tame, just drop down this hallway, head to the left, and... Ah. It's time for a new lesson in the Celeste Minimum Dash Challenge that I like to call... Acceptance. We need to get to what's behind this wall. We could try and take another route, like going on top of this dream block, but when we get to the room that activates the mirror, it's blocked off by a dream block. All we can do is look at it through the binoculars. There's just no real way to get past this area. And that's something that's gonna happen a lot during this run. So, that's our first dash, to break this wall down. But let's move on from that. The next section is pretty tricky. Uh, hi. Um, editing Eve here. I just realized that I explained that pretty poorly, so, um, let me try and explain it in a bit better detail. Basically, you wanna do a short hop so that you don't hit the spikes on the ceiling, um, then do a back spike jump onto another wall where you then do a regular spike jump, and then you can grab the dash crystal because that refills your stamina. Something that I didn't actually know they did until starting this challenge. Alright, there we go. Back to the video. It's pretty straightforward from there until, well, we activate the mirror, and the main mechanic of this level shows itself. The dash blocks. The idea of the dash blocks is that you dash into them, and they launch you out the other side. So, right away we have dash number two, as you have to get through this block to get out the other side. However, the rest of the blocks in this section can be avoided, until we get to this section. We have to get to the other side of this room, and the only way is seemingly through this dash block. After some testing, however, I found a method that's a contender for maybe the worst trick in this run so far. Head down to the left and you'll get to this room. There's an extra path you're supposed to access from the place we're trying to get to. It has a short puzzle for a berry, and a secret path for another that leads to the lower half. So, theoretically, if we did all of that backwards, we should be able to get to that spot. The problem? We have to get to there, from over here. For reference, one of the hardest jumps in Chapter 1 required a moving spike hop over a large gap of spikes. There was a very small margin for error, and you had maybe half a dozen frames to get to the other side. This jump passes for three of those in a row, but you have absolutely no margin for error here. I had to change the game speed to even get this jump. I mean, I'm sure it's possible full speed, and if someone else wants to do it, then go ahead. But I don't want to spend three hours on the same jump, okay? Cool, cool. But if you can pull that off, you'll uh, get to the other side and save yourself a dash at the cost of everything else. Luckily, the worst of it is over, depending on how you define worse. See, we get to here, and this is where I make another confession. I'm not a professional Celeste player. I wouldn't say I'm bad at it, I've been farewell and around half the Gonberry A-sides, but I saw a dashless task with this game a while back. Not all of it, since I want to figure out as much of this as possible on my own, but I saw the run of this level. And they did this. Let's break it down. A crouch jump onto the corner of the dream block, which somehow gets them enough distance to jump on the corner of the spikes like in chapter 1. And then a double... spike jump... thing? which gets them enough distance onto the wall. Now, if you want a comprehensive guide on what a tool-assisted speedrun is, Bismuff has a very good video explaining it, but essentially that run was done with software that can input anything with basically robotic perfection. However, I am not a robot, I am a human. Human hands push the buttons, and it is dictated by human skill, which is not robotic. Essentially what I'm saying is I don't know how I'd pull that off, or if it's even humanly possible. I've tried, but it just doesn't make sense. How do you jump to that wall? How do you get enough speed and height to clear the spikes? What's with the double spike jump? So I am simply dashing through this wall and letting the robots take over. On the very next screen we have this monstrosity. So obviously you need to dash, but I managed to find a route that only takes 5 dashes to complete. Which is still pretty rough, I sure hope the next part is a little bit easier. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, um... <sighs> okay, okay. The power of goth girls stands in our way. The Badline chase sequence is the most costly thing thus far on the run. It's filled with parts that are literally barricaded by dream blocks. Our only option is through them. And so, this becomes a game of optimizing just where and how we dash. 
For example, this screen normally needs three dashes. However, if we climb to the top of this block and dash and jump out of the other side, we can land on the corner of the block hanging out of here and do a fancy little diagonal dash to make it too. Honestly, parts of the run like this are the most fun. Meticulously dancing through spikes and physics are interesting to watch and root, but finicky and very difficult. It's nice to finally be able to use part of Madeline's moves again and makes optimizing a lot more interesting. There are three sections of interest here, the keycoin room and this room near the end. So let's start with the keycoin rooms. Here we need to jump on this platform and get up to the dream block. However, it's too high to jump normally and we can't reach any of the walls without dashing. However, if we jump on the platform before it fully lowers, we can reach the walls. Of course, trying to do that with the usual route in time greets us with a face full of battle line, and so we need to get smart. On your way down to the keycoin, jump on this platform rather than running straight down. Then Bad Line will jump too, giving you just enough room to scoot underneath her and get to the platform in time. It doesn't look that difficult, but it's decently precise. Then we get to this room. Okay, let me break it down. I feel like we could maybe reach the keycoin up there if we could jump up from the wall. It certainly looks that way as we can get to the corner just above it. But try as I might, I couldn't seem to position myself quickly enough to reach it. Even if there was some ultra mega crouch dash jump, Badline might still catch up before we can position ourselves. So I decided to use two dashes to get the coin as intended. This one you can skip though. Then we have this room. Seems like another nightmarish combination of spike jumps and wall climbs, and it is. But we have another problem, stamina. If we just hold onto the walls and jump, Madline will lose stamina before we can get to the end and it makes this jump over the wall a lot trickier. The solution here then is to use the momentum from the dash block to hit this side of the wall. It's a difficult shot, but land it and you'll have just enough to close the gap. Here's the full thing if you need it. And so the chase sequence ends, two dash blocks later and we finish off chapter 2. Let's tally up the dashes. Yikes. Oh boy, that was interesting. After playing this game for such a long amount of time one specific way, it's really fun to look at things from another perspective like this. Everything is different, and I love how some of the most unsuspecting obstacles can lead to some of the most interesting and nightmarish platforming. And things are only going to get harder and more interesting from here on out. So if you like this video, please let me know. Be it through liking, subscribing, or a supportive comment, because believe me, I'm gonna read it. And with that, I've been Eve Citrus, and uh... What's my outro can? Stay fresh? Zesty? Sour? They, they probably don't want to stay sour, but I mean, sour Skittles, sour candy, it could be interesting. Uh... I feel like we could have maybe reached a Q-Quick... Q-Quick?